This video is sponsored by Notion. If you want to get your life more organized, check out the link in the description to try out Notion for yourself. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those naturally organized people, but I absolutely love organization. And I would put money on it that somewhere in your brain, you just went, yep, I know exactly what he means. It's something that I have to work pretty hard at all the time to get it to where I want it to be. And ever since I heard the phrase, there's an app for that, I've been trying to find an app or two apps or five apps that could help me to make organization and productivity easier for me. And then I came across an app called Notion and it had the flexibility, simplicity, and customization that I wanted from all those other apps all combined into one. So in this video, I wanna take you through my super simple setup inside Notion that I use to organize my life, my YouTube channel, my goals, and more. And hopefully it can do the same for you. All right, so this is my Notion dashboard. This is kind of where it all starts for me as far as organization and productivity. And if you've ever watched any other Notion setup videos, this is gonna look really simple, but that's by design. What I really needed out of a productivity and organization app is simplicity. Something that can hold just enough information that I won't forget about things or I can take down my notes and those kinds of things, but it's not so overly complicated that I'll get overwhelmed and I won't want to do that stuff in the first place. So while Notion is an incredibly powerful app and there are so many things you can do with it, a lot of the things that I've done are very basic. So if that sounds like you, this might be a good way to set this up. Okay, so taking a look at the dashboard first, we've got pages over on the right-hand side here. This is just quick links to all those other pages. And then we've got our task list all blown out on this left-hand side. And this is really just a to-do list. This is for relatively quick things that I need to do. I can just add them on here and when you check them off, for example, like plan Notion video, I did that, as you can probably tell, uh, I can check that off and it'll disappear. Now within this task list, you can actually open this up as a page if you want to. So I can click tasks here. And now we can see a little bit more of an expanded version of what we saw on the dashboard. I like to keep it on the dashboard though so that I can see those little things just in case I want to work them into my day. My task list is a really simplistic table that just has a couple of properties in there. So I've got the task, the name of it. Then I've got a checkbox for when it's done. I've got the priority and there are three options in there you can choose low, medium, or high. And then I've got it sorting by priority descending so that the highest priority ones come out on top. Then I've got categories and I've just got a couple of different categories. So Donna did it being my YouTube channel, uh, home, which is like anything kind of personal or for my house, and then work, which is my recording studio. And then on the far right here, we've got time. And this is just kind of an estimate of how long I think that thing will take. I find that putting that in there kind of gives me a realistic idea of how long I should set aside within my day to get that thing done. So for example, following up with Lens Baby is probably only going to take me 15 minutes. Now let's say I came up with something new that I wanted to add to my to-do list. I can just click new. I can add a title. So let's say I need to take out the garbage. We're going to set it priority as medium. I'm going to call it home and it's going to take me 10 minutes. A lot of people's to-do lists will get really complicated and there's so many more categories and tags and all that kind of stuff. And I actually purposely made it so this would be really easy. I wanted it to make it so it would take me less than 10 seconds to type in a new to-do. And I don't mean to knock anybody else's to-do list. There are a lot of really fantastic ones out there, but this is just the way that I needed it to work so that again, I wouldn't get overwhelmed by all of the different options and tags and those kinds of things. I'm a big fan of the tables within Notion. I have a tendency to use them to kind of build out everything. And I love the fact that you can do different views. So for example, right now I'm on the all tasks view, so I can see literally everything. But if I wanted to filter it by just done a did it tasks, I could click that and it's a different view. Then I could go just home tasks, just work tasks, and then I can see all the things that I'm done. So heading back to the dashboard, you can see we've got that task list on the left-hand side. It's nice to have that right on the homepage. So I can just get a quick look of what I've got to do, potentially slot any of that in during my day when I go to start planning everything out. Then on the right-hand side, we've got all the different pages. We've got YouTube videos, which I'm gonna save because it's kind of the biggest, most complicated one. So we're gonna save that for a little bit later. But below that, we've got notes, which is basically just a notebook. If we come in here, we can see another table 
table. Again, I really love the tables. I've got all notes, done and did it notes, and home notes. I should have another view for work notes, but apparently, oh, I don't have any work notes yet. That's why. We'll call it Recording Studio 2021 Plan set that for work. Within my notes, I've made a bunch of different tags just to make things a little bit easier to kind of search. Set it as goal setting, and then we can open this as its own page, and then I can start typing notes in here. So I'm gonna add a view. It's gonna be a table view, so that's the same as this one. Hit create. We're going to filter, add a filter, and then only category work rename it work notes. There we go. So now I've got all my categories so I can see the different types of notes. And as you can see, it's super easy to add and take away different views or different categories. You can constantly be moving this around. Even just in planning this video, I did a lot of work moving things around and creating new pages and creating new tables and that kind of stuff because it's just so easy to move things around and customize. Next on the list, we've got our projects. Now projects and tasks are very similar. It's basically like, a task is a quick to do, something that I can get done in a couple hours or less. And then a project is something that's a bit bigger of a scope. So when we go into projects, we see a Kanban board layout, different categories for where different projects are. So the first category is idea, then we've got doing, waiting, and done. Sometimes you get that idea, you're like, this is a project that I want to do eventually. So we throw it down there. Then we've got doing. So if we're in the process of doing that project, I find that there are a lot of times where I might be doing a project, but I'm just waiting on something to happen. And if I see something in the waiting category, sometimes it means that I need to check in with people, that kind of stuff. And then of course, done means they're done. And so let's say I started planning my merch today. I can move my merch into the doing category and I can start thinking about merch. I'm gonna move that back so I don't trick myself into thinking that I already started that. Again, in the projects page, we've got a bunch of different views. The cool thing here is that you're taking the same information and just filtering it and looking at it a different way. So all of these different projects that I want to do, I can also look at by the category. So you can kind of break it up, still the same stuff, but all in different categories. So depending on how I wanna look at it, I can look at a full list. And then there is a calendar view, although I don't think I have, oh, I do have one thing in there that actually has a date attached to it. So again, I've kind of got the tasks page, which is my kind of smaller to do's. And then I've got the projects page, which are my bigger projects. The goal here is to try and make it as little friction to get from me having an idea and me putting it down there. So next on the list, we've got our contacts. This is actually something that I've just started, so I haven't really filled it out. And it has a lot of personal information on there, so I'm not actually gonna open this one up. Essentially, it's just another table that looks very similar to this one, but in the first category, it's got their name, telephone number, email address, what company they work for, those kinds of things, just so I can keep track of my main contacts kind of all in the same place. And then the last page that I've got here is goals and dreams. This is another one that's fairly new. One of the things that I want to start doing more of is thinking about and kind of journaling down my goals and dreams, things that I want to do that are just like big, huge ideas and just notes that I can take from them. So not so much things that I have a clear action plan for yet. Those will go more in the projects, but these are just like when I have a big idea or if I need to brainstorm somewhere, I can do that here. I haven't done anything fancy with views yet on this one, but I've just got a couple of little ideas. This would be a great place for things like New Year's resolutions, that kind of stuff, any kind of goal setting that you might want to do. Again, really, really simple stuff. Probably the most complicated thing I did was took some of my photos and put text on them so that I can make little headers for some of the pages here. And then finally, kind of the main reason that I got Notion in the very first place, I had a whole bunch of different apps that I was using to plan the videos, keep track of my different sponsors and payments and those kinds of things. Notion really allowed me to combine it all together in a single page almost. Now, this all did start out with a template that I got from, I believe it was from Thomas Frank. And again, like I've mentioned a couple 
couple of times, the beauty of Notion is that I can take his template and I adjusted it to what I needed. So we've got another Kanban board here where you can see I've got idea then I've got on deck. So that means like, I'm gonna do this soon kind of category. So I've got scripting, which is basically like planning the video. Then I've got production then I've got scheduled for when I've got it uploaded to YouTube and it's ready to go for my next publish date. And then I've got a published category, which I don't need to see all of those. I can go in there at any point if I want to. Now, here's the coolest thing about this. Let's say I get an idea and I wanna do a video about how to photograph frogs. That's my video idea. We're gonna click into that. At the top, you can see all the categories that I can fill in. So I've got a status, so that's where I put it, was in the idea category. I can rank it from one to five stars as far as like how strong I think that idea is. This Kanban board is set to sort by the better ideas at the top. Once I know when I wanna publish it, I can choose a publish date. If there's a sponsor, I can add them in there. I can put the price in there. This is to check off whether they've paid or not. Then I've got tags, so I've got a bunch of different types of videos so I can tag up which one. So how to photograph frogs would probably be a tutorial. Let's fill this all in. That's a That idea is a four. So you can see it's higher in the list now. Publish date, let's say we're gonna release this on Christmas. Sponsor is Frog Boys. Sponsor price is $13 and they prepaid for this video. And then I've got a spot for the URL after I've already published it. Now, down at the bottom here is where I always click my done did it project template. And this is a template again that I took from another template and modified to fit my needs. And I've modified it probably four or five times. We're gonna click project template and watch it all appear. There we go. So we can see we've still got our same cover. We've still got our same title, but now within the actual page, itself, it's filled in all of this different stuff. So first and foremost, when I'm planning videos, we've got our outline. And this is where I just really try and get the idea down. This is gonna get me started as far as planning. So the first thing I say is, what is the problem of this video? People don't know how to photograph frogs. How will this video solve that? It will teach them how to photograph frogs. Any important points that need to be covered? So this usually is a little bit longer because it'll be like macro ideas, lighting ideas, pitfalls to watch out for, lenses to use, other gear, getting the frog to stay still. Those are the things that I wanna make sure that I say within the video. And then if the video does have a sponsor, which this one was Frog Boys for $13, we can then put any notes that they want. They wanted us to make sure to uh, throw to their website. That's our basic outline. By just opening this page and looking at that, I know the whole idea of what this video is going to be about. Then below that, we've got four different little kind of categories. So under content here, there are three different pages that are automatically created when I hit that template. Research and notes is literally just a blank page that says any notes, research, and test results go here. That one I really just need because I do reviews on different pieces of gear, so I have to have somewhere to keep all of that information. The next one is a script. Again, pretty self-explanatory. It's a blank page ready for a script. And then the third one is a shot list. And again, the shot list is just another blank page, but the difference here is that instead of just being a bulleted list, this one actually has check boxes so that I can check off when I get different shots. I did a lot of research and I've tried a lot of different shot lists with different tables and different categories and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, I just found it more headache than it was worth for the way that I shoot. And it was just easiest to just have a simple list that I could check off. Over on the right hand side here, we've got all the metadata. So we've got keywords here. So this would be like trying to research for our title. We've got title ideas. So if I wanted to put down a bunch of different ideas, can do that there. And then we've got sponsor information. So again, just another spot where I can put uh, the URL of the video and the call to action, which now that I think about it, I've got the URL here and sponsor info here. So some of this stuff gets left blank a lot of the time. I'll show you that in a second. Next, we've got our checklist. So I've got the video creation checklist and then a publishing checklist. So if we take a look at the video creation checklist, literally all of the things just to make sure that I didn't forget anything. But a lot of the time I'll make a video and then come look at this list and be like, hey, yeah, I, I did enough. The video's done. <laughs> this is more of a just in case kind of thing for me. 
and then we've got a publishing checklist, all the different things that you might want to do if you were publishing a YouTube video. And then on the right hand side, I've got a couple of resources. So Morning Fame, TubeBuddy, Thumblytics, and Thumbs Up. So Morning Fame is the website that I use to kind of make my title and choose my different keywords. TubeBuddy is another really great resource for similar things. Thumblytics and Thumbs Up are both places where you can go and test your thumbnails. So before I mentioned that a lot of this stuff sometimes just gets left blank, I want to show you guys an example. This DaVinci Resolve color grading workflow video is already done. It's ready to go. And if you look at this, I didn't put an idea rating. I didn't put a published date yet. I literally didn't fill out an outline. I literally just like had an idea and shot the video. So some of this is just, just in case I need it. Sometimes I don't actually need all of this stuff, but it's really nice to have it there when I'm having trouble pushing forward with a project. The nice thing is that you can kind of get as simple or as in depth as you want to. So for example, I basically had this idea I put it there and then it kind of just like moved along and eventually it will move into the published category. Have I scheduled this? No, I haven't scheduled it yet. Actually, that's a good thing that we could do. So this one is going to be going up next Monday on the 14th. So when I click on the 14th under publish date, so now we can go over to calendar view and we can see the different videos that I have all ready to go. So, and the nice thing about this is like, for example, this Catalyst Browse versus Gimbal video, it didn't happen because I don't have the gimbal that I want for it yet. So I can move it, let's say to the 28th and it'll automatically update that publish date within the actual page itself. Some of the other views that I have for my YouTube videos. So we've got our basic status view and I've got active videos, which is anything that's not an idea or published. So this is all the statuses that are in the middle of our Kanban board here. And then I've got my calendar, which we already saw. Then I've got all of my ideas. And then I've also got a sponsored videos page, which shows me all of my videos that have a sponsor with them, whether they've paid up, how much typically, but I've left that off for now and who sponsored it. And then the status of where that's at. This is really handy for me so that I can kind of keep track of when I've got sponsored videos coming up and I should be preparing for them, those kinds of things. Most of this was built out of templates that I either got from Notion themselves or I got from other Notion users. And then if you just learn enough, you can go in and tweak it to your own needs. And this is the thing that separates Notion from all of the other productivity apps that I've ever used is that it's so customizable and it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. And that just works so well for me personally. And I love that I, I really didn't have to do a lot of work to learn even what I do know within it, um, especially with the templates. So you can just grab a template from the templates folder here. You wanna make a journal or a reading list or a set of goals. Here's one if you're looking for New Year's resolutions, you can make a goals list like that. All sorts of really cool stuff. And all you do is just hit use this template and bam, it has added it as a page in my Notion. And on top of adding it, it's also given me a bunch of instructions on how to use it. So that's kind of how I set up my Notion and I absolutely love it because I can take it wherever I want with me. It's good on desktop, on the web, on my iPad, on my phone, basically anywhere. It's always there with me. I can add a quick to do or I can check my notes or whatever I need to do. And again, it is so customizable. So if you've got a similar style of organization organization to me and this look great, you can just go ahead and copy what you've seen here. Or if you want something a little more complicated or something a little different, you can totally do it because it just molds to whatever you need. Huge thank you to Notion for reaching out and sponsoring this video. If you want to check it out, if you want to try it out, make sure to go use that link in the description to let them know where you came from. I highly recommend it. I think it can improve so many people's lives. If you have any questions about my Notion setup or want to know more, make sure to leave a comment down below and on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.